Hello everyone and welcome back, Dom here and in this video I'm going to give you 12 key editor tips in Cubase that you should definitely know right after this. There's a good reason why most people say that Cubase is pretty much the best DAW when it comes to media editing. Well, that's true, I totally agree with this, you know this, and today I'm going to give you 12 tips on the key editor that contribute to this fact. So without any further ado, let's get started. Today I'm going to be using an instrument that some of you might know, but if you don't know this, this is Patch Shop 2 and I'm going to be using a preset called Love Theme MW, which is a preset from my Patch Shop library called Apollo. If you haven't checked it out, I'm going to have a link down below. Here's the video if you want to check it out more in depth. And if you decide to pick it up, have fun, make some great music and thank you so much. So tip number one is the chord editing and this is one of the things that many people don't know it exists let me create a new part here and i'm going to open it so there you go i'm going to open the full window and i'm going to show you how you can use this you just go to chord editing right here see this option and then you just select the type of chord you want to create so if you want to create a minor chord you just select minor you see this uh, little arrow here lights up i can go here and just click and i can create a c minor chord if i want to create an f minor chord i can go here f okay f and click drag and then i can create an f minor chord same goes if you want to create a major seventh a minor seventh a diminished and so on and so forth this is very very simple to use and it's the easiest way to create chords in the key editor the great thing is that once you've created the chord you can even change the inversion so you can say i want to move my inversion up okay and create all those different variations of the chord you can even drop notes drop the second note or drop the third and so on and so forth you can even create chord symbols but this is the core functionality you go to your chord editing and you make sure that you select the type of chord and then you just click that's it tip number two is hold control or command on the mac to select all the notes of the same pitch so the way you do this let's say you want to select all these c notes right here see you can do this of course but then you might miss some notes or you might just pick some notes that are not there the easiest way to do this is hit control or command on the mac and just click that note here see and now all the notes are going to be selected. Let's say I want to do this with this note. See, same exact thing. And now I can select notes of the same pitch very, very easily. Now, this could be also very useful if you're programming drums and you want to select all the kick drums or all the snares or all the hi-hats and so on and so forth. It's very, very easy and foolproof. You can't make any mistakes like that. Tip number three is quantize ends and lengths. Again, this is a function that might be very, very useful. See, so I've played this part freely here, but let's say I want to quantize it. Let's hit Q, okay? And this is quantized, but then I can go here to quantize and I can also also quantize the lengths and I can also quantize the ends so with lengths you will see that if I click on that it will quantize the lengths so that it matches the quantized value that we have here now if we quantize the ends again it will quantize to the closest 16th note and this will be differentiated if you select a different value for your quantize and your quantize length so if I select whole note okay you will see that when I hit quantize lengths it gives me a very different results to if I hit quantize ends. So very, very useful function if you want to clean up your lengths and your ends, especially if you're planning to do a lot of MIDI editing and you don't want to have these notes just being split in the middle and moving from one event to the other. So that's that can save you a lot of time. Now, another very useful function that many people wonder if it exists or sometimes they do a lot of quantizing and then they want to go back and they try and do undo. Well, it's easier if you just go here in the quantize panel and say 
reset quantize. Once you do this, no matter how many times you've quantized the notes, this will bring them to its initial state. And you know what the great thing is? You can just say, I want to reset quantize on these notes. I might want to quantize this once, okay? But these, I might want them to be more freely played, okay? And then I can say, reset quantize for just these notes and boom. Now, these notes go back to their initial position when we recorded them. Really, really cool, this one. Next, we have the tilt, expand, compress, in the key editor. Let me show you. First, you can do this using the velocities here. So what I can do is I can select all of the notes, okay? You can see we have different velocities here. Maybe I want to lower all of these velocities like this. There we go. Okay, that's very simple. Now, if I want, I can tilt those velocities. Check this out. And maybe I want to start with a low velocity and go louder and louder, like a crescendo. And you can do this by dragging these arrows here, see? Top right, top left. And uh, I can go the other way around, and so on and so forth. Now, it doesn't stop there. If you want to, you can see these velocities, you can basically scale them. So you can go here at the very center of your lane and just drag up, and now you're expanding the velocities, the range, or you can compress it and make them a little bit more uniform, see? Very, very powerful, and if you want to do this on other DAW, sometimes you have to do it to menus and start doing calculation like you're doing maths. I hate that. So this is very, very fast and powerful if you want to do this. And it works with velocity, but it also works with modulation. So you see that? I have this modulation here. I can select all of it. And now I can do exactly the same thing here. So I can say I want to tilt. I want to tilt from the right. I want to compress or I want to expand the automation here, my CC automation. This is CC1, by the way. So very powerful and uh, very fast as well. Next, we have the curve. So as you can see here, I have recorded my mod wheel in order to be able to get this kind of result from this Apollo patch, okay? <laughs> So I recorded this using my mod wheel, but if I want to, I can start utilizing my curves. So let me show you. If I remove this, if I select this and delete this, as you can see, I have this little dot here. So I can drag this and now I can turn this into a beautiful curve and I can do it like that, I can do it like that, and it's very precise and really smooth. So let's have a listen. So if you want to edit your media, especially when it comes to strings, you know, filter automations and all these things, the curves are really, really nice to work with. And it also works this way with pitch bend data. Really, really nice. The next tip is not a single tip, but it's a menu. You know, if you go MIDI and you have your key editor open, you can go to functions and here you can find quite a few things. I would suggest that you go through them and see what they do. You can do lots of detailed editing here. So if I go velocity, for example, I can go and say, I want to subtract a certain amount of velocities, especially if you know an instrument, for example, there are some drum libraries that when you go over 126 or 127 to trigger a different sample, maybe you want to subtract minus one and you make sure that this never reaches 127, or you can compress, expand, and limit. I mean, this is pretty much what we can do here. You can do fixed velocity, so you might want to select your notes and say, you know what, I actually want them to be fixed velocity, and you can go here and just set the velocity to fixed, and the velocity value will be according to what you set right here, okay? And many, many other things. You can delete double nodes, you can delete controllers, continuous controllers, and so on and so forth. Very, very useful menu, so I would suggest that you check it out. Next tip is the scale correction grid. Now, this is a godsend. This was introduced in Cubase 11, and it's one of my favorite changes in the key editor. Basically, you can go here to scale assistant, and you can say, okay, great. I want to quantize not my rhythm, but the notes. So you might want to set up an edit 
greater scale. So I'm going to set A minor, natural minor here. And then I can say show scale node guides and also snap pitch editing. And now, for example, if I take these notes here, see, and I start moving this, then you will see that it won't land on any note that I leave it at. It will snap to the note that's allowed in this specific key, in this case, a minor. Now, if I go here and I take it even further, I can say, you know, show pitches from scale assistant only. So if I do this, now you will see that it only give me the pitches of the scale assistant. So if you don't have any knowledge of music theory or music harmony, this will be a super cool thing to do because this will save you a lot of time. You don't have to worry about is this note going to be in key or not? It's going to be in key, okay? And the other great thing is you can create harmonies very, very easily. For example, let's say I want to have a melody that's a third above this melody here. It's actually very easy to do. All I need to do is take this top melody here, see that? And now I can drag it one third above and I can be guaranteed that this is going to be one third above in key. Let's check it out. So very, very simple, and this has saved me so much time since Cubase 11 came out. It's really unreal. Now, the only thing I want is for this to be able to happen in Vari Audio for vocals, and I'm set. Now, talking about harmonies, the next thing that I'm going to show you is to keep the note position while dragging it up and down. So, for example, let's say I want to take this note here, okay, maybe this B. See, it's not quantized, but maybe I want to turn it to D, for example. So if I drag it... You will see that it might lose its position, but if you hold the control key on Windows or the command key on Mac while you drag it, it will hold its position. So drag first and then hold control and then it will stick to its original position when it comes to the grid. So very important function. And again, if you want to copy the note, it works exactly the same way. You click. You hit Alt to duplicate, drag, and then hit Control, and that's it. This way, you cannot make mistakes, you cannot mess it up. Now, another very cool shortcut for the key editor is the Control and Shift or Command and Shift on the Mac that allows you to change the velocity. So let's say I want to change the velocity for a note. Let me go to the velocity lane here. And let's say I want to change the velocity for this note. Now, if I hold Control and Shift on PC or Command and Shift on the Mac, you see my cursor turns into this icon and now I can drag and change the velocity really, really easily. The next tip is the show all used controllers. This tip, especially for film composers that have a lot of CC controllers or for people that program synths, it's a godsend. Let's say I have, uh, you know, my velocity lane here, but I've also recorded some other CC messages. So the manual way is to go here, find which ones I've used. I've used Aftertouch, CC1, CC64 with sustain and so on and so forth. But what I can do, which is even better, is I can go here plus and select show use controllers. In my case, I've also assigned a shortcut to this because I do this all the time. So if you click on this, then you will find all the controllers that you've used for this specific MIDI part. Really, really useful, really nice. It saves you so, so, so much time. Let me hide all the controller lanes and I'm going to do this with my shortcut, Command Alt Shift, Control Alt Shift. Bliss, so 
so good. I love this shortcut. And then last thing that I want to talk about, I've talked about this in another video, I'm going to link it right here, is the step input mode. Many people forget that this exists, but it's so easy to program MIDI notes, especially if you're not a keyboard player. This, you find it right here, step input, and you will see that we have a blue cursor appearing here, so I can place it right here and start inputting my notes regardless of how fast I play them. Really, really fast, really simple, and if I move my cursor left and right with my arrow keys on my keyboard, I can just move the cursor like a typewriter. If you want to know more about this, I'm going to have a link in the video right here. But that's the last tip for today. Let me know which one of these tips did you know already and which one was new to you. I'd really like to know. And I hope that now you have a little bit more ammunition when it comes to working with the key editor. These are really, really cool functions. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one, my friends. Have a great one. Bye-bye.